Our culture says that traditional masculinity is toxic and dangerous to both women and men. However, the fact is that true masculinity is one of the primary building blocks of our civilization. And maybe you've heard the old saying, strong men create good times, good times create weak men, weak men create bad times, and bad times create strong men. In this video, I'll explain the importance of true manliness and how strong men and women can reclaim our culture one step at a time. I'm Jack Bittner, and you're watching Unwoke from Minnesota Family Council. Today, a lot of young men are asking themselves these questions. What is manliness? What does it mean to be a strong man? What makes you a weak man, for that matter? In modern society, we're seeing a complete redefinition of these words. Being masculine these days has been relegated to a feeling, a bad feeling, a sort of fever that men get between the ages of 15 and 50 that makes them a danger to society, to women, and to themselves. Traditionally, manliness has been viewed as a character quality defined by toughness, often physical, but emotional and mental as well. Men were expected to maintain a stiff upper lip, even in the worst of circumstances. While most people would agree that um, statements like, boys don't cry, or take it like a man, might be unnecessarily harsh, there is something to be said for aspiring towards that standard. It's like the army officer at the Battle of Waterloo who was calmly asked if he was injured and replied calmly that yes, in fact, his leg had been blown off. No need to fuss about it though. The truth is that when men are driven to success, our culture prospers. The key word here is drive. Drive is what allows men to endure harsh circumstances in bad times and create magnificent things in good times. It is precisely for this reason that our 35th president, John F. Kennedy, once said, do not pray for easier lives. Pray to be stronger men. So here are three reasons why America needs manly men. Driven men do great things. Modern men are losing their drive and weak men cause problems. First, driven men do great things. When a man is driven, he brings success not only to himself, but to his family, to his community, and to his country. Justice Clarence Thomas is an example of this. Thomas' early life required a tremendous amount of drive to endure his harsh circumstances. Rising from abject poverty and homelessness to one of the most honored positions in the land takes manliness. As a black man, Thomas fought hard for his community through cases like Missouri v. Jenkins and his work as Assistant Secretary of Education. The results were a historic climb to a seat on our nation's highest court and earning the respect of his countrymen. Because he was driven, Thomas was able to accomplish great things, and there are countless examples of driven men striving for the greater good or simply making the world a better place with what they do and what they create. So here's the bottom line. Men with purpose do great things, and culture as a whole benefits when men act like men. Second, men today are not driven. The 21st century has provided us with many wonders, such as immersive video games and streaming video. Now, I love these things, but it's kind of horrifying to see young men in my generation getting sucked into these things to the point where they lose their drive and their strength. But even more dangerous than that, is the advent of internet pornography. Through the cultural mainstreaming of porn and the OnlyFans generation of women, men are facing the temptation of explicit media everywhere they go. Psychologists Philip Zimbardo and Nikita Duncan conducted a study on the effects of this addictive behavior in men and discovered that it turned ordinary men into weak, shy boys lacking conviction or drive. This will come as a shock to many guys who had underestimated the effects of these destructive habits. But it should come as no surprise that a man who surrenders to addictions will lack the drive to overcome harsh circumstances and create lasting cultural change. Becoming enslaved to addictions makes men weak. Finally, weak men cause problems. When Abraham Lincoln, another example of a masculine American president, entered office, he noticed there was a huge problem. There was injustice across the United States as slavery was legal and rampant at the time. On the subject of slavery, Lincoln stated, By instances of the perpetrators of such acts going unpunished, the lawless in spirit are encouraged to become lawless in practice, and having been used to no restraint but dread of punishment, they thus become absolutely unrestrained. In saying all this, he was actually calling out the weak men who would become enablers of evil men. 
They had let evil go unpunished, and the evil men, slave owners in this case, had become absolutely unrestrained. Remember the axiom I quoted earlier? This is a textbook example of weak men creating hard times. These hard times not only affected the black population of America through the hideous injustice of slavery, but it also affected the whole American population through the heavy casualties of the Civil War. Blood is on the hands of the weak men who enabled evil by simply doing nothing. To the men watching this video, I want you to know that your masculinity is a gift, so cultivate it. Strong men with determination are what America needs, despite our culture's blaring message to the contrary. This is Unwoke from Minnesota Family Council. Click like and subscribe to get more videos like this. Learn more about what we do at mfc.org unwoke.